Hey, this is Jake from Jake of All Trades, and today we're going to do an oil service. So let's talk about what we're going to need. Um, let's just talk about what we need to lift the car and keep it keep ourselves safe. Uh, here we've got our, our jack stands, and we're going to keep the car supported with these. Uh, we've got a pair of wheel chocks to uh, to keep the tires in place, and obviously we have our floor jack. Um, if you have one, that's great. If you're going to go buy one, make sure it's rated for what you're going to lift, and most are. Um, this is a three-ton jack, so we can support 6,000 pounds. And these, I believe, are three ton as well. Um, three ton jack stands. So that means these also can port three tons each. This one can, can support three tons, and this one can support three tons. And uh, if you want to look at how to raise a car safely, uh, you can see that in another video I'll have posted up on the proper way to lift a car and support a vehicle. Uh, I'm just going to do the short version on this since we have that other video already. So. Um, let's bring it over here. Uh, most important tool, owner's manual. We need to know what type of oil it takes as well as um, how much oil it's going to take. Uh, you're going to need some gloves and some rags. And then just a few tools here. Um, we got just uh, our oil wrench and we've got a couple different versions of this I just want to show you. I like this one the best. It grabs just about anything I need. I don't have to worry about different sizes. This is more of the uh, Clamp. I mean the uh, spring type, um, and this is this will as you pull this will will pull tension on the filter and you'll be able to take it off. Um, but sometimes you might have to get a different size depending on your filter size. There are also these guys. Um, I don't like these because if it's on too tight, these just kind of tend to turn, and, and that's no good. So um, I would recommend this band again, this band type right here. And I would, especially with this handle that flexes, you can kind of bend this to get this out of the way because sometimes you can't get to it straight on with it like this. Sometimes you do have to bend the handle over in order to turn it. We also need a funnel um, when we're adding oil. Uh, we're, and then we're going to need something to pour the oil in, which is our oil drain pan here so we can dispose of it uh, a little bit later. So let's uh, look at a few more tools here. The last one you're going to need is a uh, ratchet and a set of sockets. Um, typically on newer cars you're going to use metric. If you've got an older card, you're going to need standard sockets or SAE sockets, but um, most cars today are, are metric and you have to figure out which one it is. Um, a lot of them are 17 millimeter, but you're going to have to find out. You can also use a wrench um, as well. Just make sure you get the right type, whether it's standard or metric. And again, most cars today are metric, uh, but you definitely want to check and make sure uh, we'll talk about that when we go under the car. So let's take a look at our owner's manual and look at the weight of oil that we need and the quantity of oil that we're going to need. So this just happens to be a 2006 uh, Sienna and all the information on our car is in here and most people have this but uh, they don't read it. I haven't even read it and I work on cars. Go figure. But uh, in here is all this information that, that anything you need to know about the car as far as owning a vehicle. Uh, and in the back, typically, they have some information on removing lights and that kind of thing. And then they have specifications. So we need to look at the uh, oil type. And here we are. So here's the engine. Um, some information on spark plugs. Engine lubrication. Here we are. So we need, uh, and we have with, with filter and without filter. We're going to do with the filter. So um, this is liters, quarts, and imperial quarts. So we're going to need five quarts for that. Also, the weight of the oil is everything right here. Everything is 5W30. So we got our oil, and we got that, that much. I've, I bought six quarts. We should be good. So let's, uh, let's put this thing up in the air.
want to find the hood release underneath and this one happens to be right here so you're going to pull this lever and that will release the hood once the hood is released you want to find the catch underneath the hood so like a little latch you want to pick that up and then you can lift the hood here and then sometimes you'll have a prop like this one right here lift up and that will leave the hood up and then to help this drain a little bit better what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to undo this plug the cap for the uh, oil fills in the top of the engine and uh, that will allow the, the air to get in here and then allow the oil to flow out a little bit easier so let's go down below and empty the empty the oil out of the oil pan so here's my oil pan right here uh, i also have another pan over there that's for my transaxle which is my transmission and my differential uh, you want to make sure you're emptying the right one sometimes they'll even say oil pan on the bottom but if you're not sure the oil pan is always located exactly where uh, uh, above the engine typically and then the transaxle is usually uh, opposite that so um, it can get a little confusing sometimes um, but the oil pan is always under the actual engine of the car and not the transmission so you need to be uh, aware of that when you're doing this and so you don't accidentally drain the transmission fluid instead of the oil so let's get our drain pan and let's empty this so we got our drain pan in place And now we need to find the right socket. So this one, let's see, it's a little too loose. So this one's a 15 millimeter. So we're gonna go the 14, try that. And that's perfect. Again, you wanna make sure it fits snugly. You can have a little bit of wiggle room, just like that. But I wouldn't go any more than that. It needs to be nice and snug. Um, you're gonna turn that bolt counterclockwise to loosen it so you want to make sure that you're turning it the right way you want to make sure you're actually loosening it instead of tightening it now I'm going at this backwards so it's going to be a little different but it's okay now this is loose and I'm going to put on a pair of gloves real quick because oil doesn't like my hands All right. so when got my gloves on wonderful mechanic with some sensitive hands here but just makes it cleaner. Make sure that the pan is in, in place because it's going to kind of shoot out an angle like this. It doesn't just come straight down, especially at first. So what I like to do is kind of get it all the way undone and then once I know it's undone, just pull it out and let it drain. And I'll put the, the uh, plug in here just to kind of let the oil drain off that just for a little bit. I can see it's slowing down a little bit and I don't need to wait until all the oil drains out until it's just you know drop by drop um, you can see it's kind of thinning out here and once it gets pretty thin I'll go ahead and put the plug back in you also need to make sure that if yours has a plug like this, this little piece it can be plastic it could be uh, brass it could be uh, aluminum um, that you don't just keep use, reusing and reusing and reusing that same one you want to change these out. Um, I changed this last time, so I'm going to go ahead and use it one more time. But next time, I need to make sure that I uh, actually replace this. And you can see it's just kind of dripping right here a little bit, just a small stream. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back in. One other thing you need to be aware of is you don't want to make this too tight. If you make it too tight, you stretch the threads in the pan. And it makes it really difficult to get it off next time. So just switch your ratchet over to the other side. Tighten it up. And that's good. It, you shouldn't really have to crank on this, but you don't want it too loose as well, obviously. You don't want to leak. Um, and last step, while we're down here, we're going to go ahead and just wipe this off real good. Make sure it's nice and clean. So no residual oil kind of drips off this and we think we got a leak. So clean that off. Okay. So next let's go and take off, go ahead and take off our oil filter. Now my oil filter is right here. I can see it from underneath the car. I'm going to try and grab it from this side instead of on top. I can get it from top, 
as well. Um, but what I usually what I can do is I can usually get this off by hand. Um, so let's go. Let's give that a shot. Okay, a couple important steps with our filters. Um, here's our old filter. Here's a new filter. This is a hop. Happens to be a a Fram Tough Guard, and this one is a uh, Bosch. Um, the most important thing is that I want to make sure that these two seals match up the same diameter. So I just usually take this and put them like that. Make sure that this they're, they're the same, just like that. And uh, also, just by eye, they, these diameters inside should be the same too. Now, some people say, well, you got to use new oil on this. Uh, old oil is a bad idea because it'll breaks down the uh, this this rubber ring. Uh, I don't believe in. I don't think this ring is ever going to break down if you're doing regular oil surfaces every five, six, seven, even ten thousand miles. Um, I've never seen oil this the piece of oil break down like that. Didn't happen. But it is important you coat this with a little bit of oil. Um, just take a little bit of old oil off of here, unless it's like really bad. You've never changed the oil in like four or five, six years. Yeah. Go ahead and dip your hand, finger in some new oil and coat it, but um, a little bit of this old oil, uh, on, if you're doing this on a regular basis, should be just fine. And now we're going to go ahead and spin this on. Key to this, usually there'll be some instructions on here how you do it. Like coat it with oil, get it threaded on, and then once you turn it, once it makes contact, you're going to turn this anywhere from about three quarters to a whole turn, but you're only going to use do this by hand, but you're not going to use an oil wrench to do that. Um, so one key thing here is to make sure your hands are clean. Let's take a little bit of oil on my glove. I'll just take these off and uh, make sure this is clean because I want to spin this on. I will basically want to turn this as hard as I can by hand and it should spin anywhere from two-thirds to three-quarters of a turn, even almost a full turn might be okay. Um, but that's how tight this needs to be. So I'm going to do this from the top. Spin on nice and easy. Uh, if it's not spinning on nice and easy, take it off, check it, look it over. Right, right now, I just made contact, so I'm, I spun it and it just, this gasket just started to touch um, the side of the engine block where it mounts. And so now I'm just going to turn this into about half to three quarters. Uh, so we got our oil plug in. We've got our new air, our new oil filter on. So let's go ahead and add some oil to this. Now I just happen to be using Mobile One. This is typically what's on sale at Costco or your Sam's Club, and uh, it's a pretty good deal. Uh, I'll have another whole video on synthetic oil and and uh, conventional oil for you. But we're gonna go ahead and put this in again. We've got 5W30. Hi everybody. We're gonna. Are you okay? Oh, you got a scrape? You gonna put some boo-boo spray on it? No, I don't want to. Oh, okay. So we're gonna go ahead and put this in. Now these do come in five, uh, I'm sorry, five quart containers as well, like at uh, on the auto parts store or uh, Walmart. You can get them in a five quart jug. Um, they're about work out. They work out to about the same price. So with our bottle, when we pour this, we want to make sure the spout is at the top. When we pour it, that'll give us more control. As we're pouring this, if we pour it sideways or like this, you don't have a lot of room, especially if your engine is a lot deeper. If I'm pouring it like this, I don't have a lot of control. If I have it like this, I can control where it's going a lot easier with the spout at the top. Okay. Uh, our funnel, you want to make sure. Obviously, you want to clean this out, wipe it out real good. So you're not pouring dirt right in the engine right before you start. So we'll get that going. And uh, you may have to hold yours because a lot of them have like a little plate right here. And it doesn't allow the funnel to go all the way down. So you may have to put a hand on it while you're doing this. So the manual, again, the man we looked at the manual again before we started and it said we needed five quarts when we were replacing the filter. So and these are again one US quart bottle. So we're gonna go ahead and put in five of these. 
and then we'll show you what to do from there. Also, while you're here, it's a good idea to uh, check your other fluids and make sure everything else is topped off and in good condition with your power steering and coolant and washer fluid and brake fluid, all those fluids. I'm going to have another video on that, how you check all those fluids and what you need to look for as far as color and level and that kind of thing. So this is going to be our last bottle, it's five quarts, and what I like to do is also just to, that's how I've been trained, is just wipe everything off. Cap off, wipe all the dirt out from here. Cap back in, sure it's tight. And then we'll go ahead and pull out the dipstick and check our level here. So take it out, wipe it off, put it back in, take it back out, and we're right, right where we should be. Now you can see I still have my maintenance required light on and so I'm going to go ahead and reset this and how I do this is I turn my key I turn my key to the off position I need to make sure my odometer see this my odometer is in this position and some Toyotas they want you to in trip A or trip B you can kind of toggle between the three and figure it out but um, what I want to do is with it in this position, I want to hold down this button, go back to here, it needs to be in this position, turn the key off, turn, hold this button in, while I turn on the key, I'm going to try and do this, I'm going to hold the camera, turn the key, and hold the button at the same time, so, here we go, hold it in, turn it on, and you can see the little dashes count down. And one set goes to zero. My maintenance light is gone. Okay. So next thing we want to do is go ahead and just turn it on. That oil light will be on for about three seconds. And then it should go out. If it's on longer than that, you've got an issue. Uh, so you always want to check that and make sure that uh, make that goes up. Let it run for about 30 seconds or so. Let the oil get through the engine. And we will shut it off. And again, give it about 30 seconds, one minute, get, let the oil all drain back down to the pan. And we'll go ahead and check the oil level one more time to make sure that everything is where, as it should be. So it's been about a minute. We're gonna go ahead and just, again, same process. Take the dipstick out, wipe it off, put it back in, pull it out again and check it. And you can see actually, so you can see the the uh, manual lied to us. Uh, if I, if it is full, it should be to this mark right here, and you can see we're right. Well, we're about 60% between uh, f the fill mark and full. So I'm going to add probably about another uh, less than half a quart just to get us up to that point. And that's why I always check it, even though it showed me um, that it was full uh, when I had it up. It, one, it was on jack stands, and two. Um, it, I don't. Ha I didn't have any oil in the filter at all, and the filter actually holds oil to help it pump up a little bit quicker. So I'm just going to add a little bit more oil, and but that that will be it. So I hope this is going to answer some questions for some of you out there. Uh, hopefully, some of you will actually try your own oil service. I know that 
Uh, most synthetic oil services are running between anywhere between 80 to 110, 120 dollars. And just doing this myself, I believe the filter was about six, seven dollars, and the case of oil was about 26. Uh, so plus tax. So we're looking at about 40 dollars, possibly, um, to do this. Uh, so you can save yourself quite a bit of money and you get to know your car uh, a lot better as well so you know what's going on under the hood and even underneath the car which is most people don't know and you, you start to learn a lot just by even just kind of taking a look around your vehicle um, that's just even a bonus for for a lot of car owners because um, they really don't know one other thing i forgot to mention your old oil and your old filter uh, what do i do with those uh, you take those back to typically where you bought the oil. Um, you, there's also a website. Uh, I'll post that down below as far as where you can find a place to recycle your used oil and filter. Um, but typically it's where you bought it. And you can even ask where you bought it if, at a auto parts store to you recycle oil. And it's usually for free. They don't charge you for bringing in your old oil or old filter. So you can just usually bring it back to where you bought it and uh, empty, either empty it in a container or you put it in some old bottles and just leave it there. Uh, either way, but check with where you bought your oil um, Or again, I'll put a website below and you can just put in your zip code and it'll pop up you know, All the locations around your area where you can go ahead and get that oil recycled uh, If you have any questions on this or you have any comments go ahead and please leave those below If you like these videos be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. This is Jake from Jake of all trades saying we'll see you next time